When we gaze at the sky on a dark night, we can't help but marvel at the huge range of stars and other heavenly bodies. What exactly happens in those twinkling objects has always been a mystery to humanity. Apart from providing a feast for our eyes with their shiny appearances, do the stars and other planets serve any other useful purpose for anyone? Does anyone live there? Is life possible on other planets? The ancient yoga text called the Bhagavad Gita explains that life is possible on other planets. Every planet and for that matter every heavenly body is meant for the existence of certain types of living beings. The living conditions in one heavenly body are quite different to another. For someone to reside on a planet, one's physical body, mental body and other characteristics should suit the conditions which are prevalent there. Even on earth, everyone is endowed with a certain type of body suiting the climatic conditions and the atmosphere they are living in. For example, those who live in warm tropical regions have bodies suiting the warm weather and those who live in colder places have bodies suiting the cold habitat. People living in warmer climates may find it uncomfortable living in colder places and vice versa. This is true not only for humans but also other species of life. For instance, polar bears may struggle in the plains of Africa and generally saltwater fish would struggle to survive in fresh water. Similarly, on a macrocosmic level, humans and other earthbound species are endowed with a body to suit earthly conditions. In order to live on other planets, we need a certain type of body that suits the conditions in those planets. The Gita explains the process of how one can transfer oneself from one planet to another. Those who practice a pious lifestyle and perform good karma qualify to acquire a body that suits the living conditions of higher planets. On the other hand, those who practice an impious lifestyle and do bad karma qualify to get a body that suits the conditions of lower planets. Irrespective of whichever planet one ends up in, the happiness and distress we experience on earth will continue to affect us there too. In other words, except for some better or worse facilities and living conditions, the other planets in the material world do not offer anything more substantial than life on this planet. Well, that brings us to the next question. Is there a planet that provides one with everlasting and permanent happiness? The yoga texts explain that such planets do exist. There are a vast range of spiritual planets beyond the material cosmos which are free from anxiety and those who reach such planets experience holistic harmony and happiness. The Bhagavad Gita explains that by following the transcendental process of Bhakti Yoga, it is possible to acquire a body that will qualify us to go and reside in one of those blissful spiritual planets.